So I was cruising the good old Facebook marketplace and stumbled upon a $2,500 135 that apparently wasn't running. It said it was good for parts, but after looking at these pictures, I was like, you know what? I might have a use for this thing. So right away, I pulled the car facts. I always do this when I find a new vehicle because sometimes you'll be surprised at what shows up and boy was I surprised. So this thing is a 2010 and only two months after being brand new, it was considered a total loss due to flood damage with only 1,200 miles. Holy moly. So shortly after, it was apparently exported back to Germany from Florida. And then four years later, it showed back up in the US with a rebuilt title. So someone rebuilt this thing. And then in 2015, apparently it got repoed. And the last record on the Carfax in 2022 shows only 11,000 miles. Could this be true? The next day. She doesn't have a key, so I'm gonna have to get one of those made because my goal here is to get this thing running and driving or at least running again. So the ad said the engine was good, but when it showed up, I started seeing some things that made me question if the engine was really healthy. And if not, I'd be screwed on this purchase. Ooh, yeah, that's all slush, that's all ice which is not good. I mean, it's not too bad though. That's not frozen. No. I mean, supposedly it's got really low miles, which would lead me to believe it should just have the factory coolant in it. So unless someone just topped it off with water down south, who knows, flood cars are weird. I feel like you just don't know. Oh yeah, dude, that's mint. Wow. Yeah, that's like brand new. I kind of want to pop the tabs off of this and see if there's like water damage to the, yeah. to the air filter. That could tell a story. Let's see if there's any tarantulas. Hello? Yeah, dude, it's for real. I'm giving away a Dock Race intake manifold or a thousand bucks cash. And all you got to do to get entered is head over to beamerstreet.com, buy anything from the site, and you'll automatically be entered to win. And I'm picking a winner live in three weeks on my YouTube channel. And I'm not going to lie, not a whole lot of people have entered, so the odds are pretty dang good. There's a roach. Some type of beetle, but I mean, otherwise this thing's brand new looking. I don't see any water stains. That all looks relatively clean. No rat's nest, so that's good. Yeah. So these look like the, uh, maybe some down panel solenoids. That would go in. Oh yeah, they're missing. This thing's been exposed. What is that? Oh, fuck. Damn. Oh my God. What is that? As I'm playing around in here, I'm seeing they stripped all the expensive looking electronics. I mean, I wonder if it even has an ECU. <laughs> I've got a feeling that with this being loose. Oh boy. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. It's gone. It's gone. No, God! No, God, please, no, no! So after I noticed the ECU was gone, I wanted to go ahead and check the interior, and as soon as I did that, I was met with this cluster of pigtail connectors. There's definitely a problem here. We're missing... Oh, those things connectors? Yes. Oh, boy. We're missing a lot. <laughs> that might all just plug into the back of a fuse block, though. I think half of it does. The other half of it... I don't know. What was that? That if only we had another 135 to look at. 
Maybe we should just go look instead of being lazy and acting like we know what we're doing. So that's exactly what we did. I went ahead and contorted my body in ways I didn't even know it could move to figure out what was missing from the car. I compared one car to the other one series, went back and forth and back and forth and inspected every nook and cranny of both cars to get a list of things that I noticed that were missing. And after doing that, I had a list of key components that we were missing. We were missing the DME, the main fuse box for the car, the body control module, the CAS system, and the key. And that doesn't include the vanol solenoids, and anything from underneath the car that we haven't inspected yet. But we'll get to that in just a minute. That just makes me wonder if it got to the point where people were pulling that shit out of it and not just trying to get it to run and drive. You know? Oh, I thought that was a wire. Yeah? Why, why wouldn't you just fix it? But before getting those parts, I wanted to turn this engine over to make sure it wasn't locked up or seized. So I'm gonna go ahead, remove all the coils and the spark plugs and see what we can find. OEM plugs. It's really dark. None of these are tight. So that makes me think water got into the engine at some point and maybe they just undid the plugs, turned it over to shoot the water out and maybe they learned it was still junk. I don't even know. Part of me wonders if you should even invest any money into trying to get this thing running at this I point. Know. Well, this one's wet. And there's some type of paper on it. See that? Mm. It's all wet too. Mm. Huh. I'm thinking 11,000 mile motor might be <laughs> worthless. Titanic sunken rust bucket. In the listing. Engine good. Transmission good. <laughs> Ran when parked. Yeah. <laughs> was that before or after Hurricane Ian? Yeah, what was in 2010? Was that was Katrina? That Katrina? <laughs> No, that was like 14, wasn't it? No, that was early. That was 2000. That might have been. I'll look it up. Yeah, when was Katrina? This one's wet too. Really? Mm hmm. Hurricane Katrina was 2005. Oh, damn, we're old. Oh, shit. And this one's soaked. It's the best condition looking, though. Probably because it's clean from being wet. <laughs> well, so I would think that next step, let's probably try to crank it over. My hand. Okay. Get up in the air. I could probably get, give me a screwdriver. I could probably reach in and turn on the uh, flex plate. What are you gonna do? Try to turn it over? Yeah. Yeah, it moves. It does? Yeah. So that means she's not locked up. I, mean, I can't get it to move much, but I did get it to move. I hear it. You heard it? I heard it. Yeah, I hear it moving. Yep, she's turning. Yeah. Definitely turns. Oh boy. This thing looks clean underneath. Which leads me to believe the mileage. Yeah, she's missing the downpipes that would have had the cats in them, so. Someone stole the cats or pulled the cats and cashed them in. Dude, it's really clean under here. Like this, I, I really think this thing only has 11,000 miles. I think so too. Because like this thing is spotless. Crack the drain plug real quick, see if there's any water in, in the oil. It will be the first thing to come out. Water and oil separate, oil floats on top. So if there's water in it, that'll be the first thing that comes out and we'll see it soon as we pull the plug out. Saying if it's if it's straight oil right away, just put it back in. Yep. Yeah. Put it, back in. it looks clean. <laughs> there was no water at all. Nope. Yeah, it's still got nice viscosity and stuff. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, so motor turns. No water came out. It's good. Two good signs. And then we got curious if there could be anything in the trunk, so we wanted to get in there and see what we could find. No idea if this is gonna be a good idea or a bad idea, or if it's gonna even work. It says ready. Nothing. 
Jake's gonna Google how to get in the trunk of the vehicle. Does the seat flip down? Yes, but through the trunk. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can get this one off. We got our engine cover back here. Okay. Engine cover. Carpets. I mean, all this stuff looks mint. Oh, money. Oh, okay, you still had it. How's she looking? Clean. The jams are dirty. Lots of leaves. and. I'm going to come back there. Oh, God. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, lots of been setting. Woo, back to the battery. Looks kind of dirty. Do these have dates on them? Yeah, that is kind of cruddy, isn't it? Usually they're cleaner than that, but right. yes. Especially for being inside of a compartment. Yeah, what the hell? How did someone take all the electronics out of this thing and then leave the battery? It just blows my mind. Does, would this battery have a date on it? I'm guessing it's original. Well, it turns out there was a tag on this battery. Back in March of 2015, someone either tested this battery or replaced this battery, which is around the time this thing got a rebuilt title issued. So I think that's a good sign. Is it bad that the optimist in me is still thinking we can just get like a couple things, plug them into the dash and we're good? <laughs> I'm skeptical at this point. I mean, maybe. A DME and like a fuse box. I'm willing to spend a couple hundred bucks to, to at least try. To try, yeah. I mean, I definitely think it's worth an attempt to see if this motor's any good because, I mean, or maybe it'd be cool to fire it up and see the odometer. Yeah. To see if this thing does have, you know. Is it all stored on the DME? I think on European cars and, and newer stuff in general, I think it's in multiple places. Okay. Turns out Derek was right. The mileage is stored in three different locations on this vehicle, the DME, the gauge cluster, and the CAS module. And unfortunately, this car is missing two of those three things. The only thing left is the original gauge cluster, which should show the original miles. But I'm gonna wait until the next video to pull this thing out, power it up, and show you guys what we're working with. In the meantime, I went shopping, and I bought everything we're gonna need to hopefully get this thing to run and drive again, and that includes everything from a different 2010 135i that was being parted out. From them, I scored a gauge cluster, the DME, a CAS module and body control module, and the factory key. All these things are interlinked together. It should work, so I should be able to just plug all this stuff into this car and fire it up. It may think it's this car, but it'll live on in this body. The other things we still needed were the fuse box, the vano solenoids, and some downpipes. So I'm gonna save this for the next video. I'm gonna get everything plugged in, and we're gonna see if we can bring this thing back to life. So if you wanna see what happens next with this car, make sure you're subscribed, and actually drop a comment down below. I'm gonna give a random person 50 bucks. I'm picking a random comment and PayPaling, Venmoing, whatever it is, 50 bucks to you just to show the support if you made it this far in the video. And if you want to win more than 50 bucks, remember I'm giving away that Dock Race Intake Manifold. Just head over to BeamerStreet.com, get yourself entered, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.